And a very good morning to you. It's Friday the 26th of July 2013. This is Chris Reardon with today's United Kingdom talk, or this week's United Kingdom talk. Might have to be a bit shorter today, because yes, I've got to be at the Foot Clinic again for 2.30 in London. More about that later, but more importantly, we have a new future king born. You must have been blind or deaf or everything if you haven't seen or heard the news that King George has been born, boys and girls. So well, he's not king yet, you know. The only thing is, I'm thinking like, I wonder how old he will be before he becomes king. <clears throat> you know, because the Queen who's been there forever on a day, and no one wants her to retire, let's be honest, no one wants the Queen to ever abort, not abort, <laughs> abdicate, <laughs> abdicate, no one wants the Queen, we love the Queen, I'm sure even those vile Republican type people who want nothing to do with the Royal Company family, I don't, I can't get the words out, Royal Company, I seem to be coming confused with my words this morning. No one wants the Queen to abdicate, do they? The thing is, she's 85. How old is Charles? Charles. Charles? Charles. See what I mean? Words are not coming out correctly. Maybe I need to slow down a little bit. I know what I do need to do. Turn on my internal air conditioning. Ding! There we are. Lovely. Um, yes. And I do wonder how, if, if Charles will ever become king. Do you know, I hate to say it, I think what needs to happen is that we need to miss someone. Because if Charles becomes king, then presumably he will hang on there as long as possible. So how old will it be before William becomes king? And then little George the baby. George the baby. Who incidentally... It looks like he's been named after my niece's child, who is also called George. George the baby. Always with a very happy, smiling face. I've got any photos lined up today to show you, those of you that watch the show. Sorry about that. I should have had one of George the baby lined up. But my niece's baby is the happiest baby in the entire world, I feel. So who, who, who's, you know, how long will it be before George becomes king? Will I be here? Probably. I've actually been booked to do this show for the next 10,000 years. Can you just imagine having me in your house talking for 10,000 years? And let's be honest, there's about seven or 800 shows now going back nearly seven years. Can you just imagine listening to those one after another? I mean, it would be the perfect thing. If we we're at war with someone and we have some prisoners of war who won't talk, stick them in a room and get them to listen to my show. That'll annoy them so much, won't it? It really will. Now, what about these? So that's the royal baby. I have to say, <clears throat> for me, and I'm pleased one's been born and all that, and I like the royals, but don't it go on and on on the telly. God almighty. All those people hanging about, and people camping out from all... People came from other countries just to be outside Buckingham Palace, and it's Buckingham Palace, not Buckingham Palace. As our friends in America would say, it's Buckingham. Try it, Americans. We have a lot of Americans watching this show. Buckingham, not Buckingham. Buckingham. Repeat after the tone. Buckingham. Doot. No, you didn't get that quite right. Buckingham Palace. Buckingham. Doot. Nearly. Once more. <laughs> Buckingham Palace. Repete, s'il vous plaît. Buckingham Palace. Doot. Very good. They were camping outside there for ages. I mean, did any of them, and, and, and the people camping outside the hospital as well, did you see that lot? Do you actually think they might have thought to themselves that at some point we're going to be invited in to see the royal baby? Maybe bring it a few rattles and teddy bears and things like that? There's strange people camping outside all the time. They just wanted to be there, I think. That is actually it. They, they wanted to be there. Let me just add someone. Someone wants to be added. Good morning, ad person. Oh, by the way, yes, this show is live, boys and girls. Uh, how do you know if you're live or not? 
Right. OK, if it's Friday morning, the 26th of July, 2013, and it's coming up to 23 minutes to 11 o'clock in the morning, you are with us live. And you can join in live, either by Skype or telephone or email as well. Now, my Skype, if you're lucky enough to have Skype, wonderful little service, then my Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S... R E A R D O N. Okay, Skype username is Chris Reardon. Just click on the, um, what is it, the uh, add contact thing on there, and I shall happily add you. Okay? Or you can join in by telephone. We have a local London telephone number, and I have two, 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 method, two new methods to listen to you talking if anyone rings in today. Not, don't always get people ringing in. It's, it's not like LBC, dear. You know, a switchboard of 15 people waiting to talk to me. I'm lucky to get two calls a show. You know, let's make no bones about it. And sometimes I have to bloody well beg for those. So I have this, my new earpiece, which I would like to test out with someone today to see if it works all right. OK, that's my new earpiece. Which I think is a little bit, it's a little bit like security. The, the chaps that wear, stand on the doors at security, um, uh, 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 outside pubs and things like that. Or, and I dug this out. You'll love this. My niece bought me this for Christmas. It is a red, old-fashioned handset. And I can talk to you on this as well. How marvellous. Okay. So feel free to join in at any time, anything you want to talk about or anything that I've been speaking about that you want to talk about. My Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or indeed the phone number, 20 6358 Now I have a little text thing there. There it is. One moment. There we are. Done. OK? 20 Eight one double three six three five eight. There are methods of communication uh, this morning, boys and girls. All right, don't be shy. Nice to see in a couple of the papers uh, this morning that Harry, Harry is of course um, George's uncle now. Prince Harry has become an uncle. I mean, it was just like yesterday we were seeing him outside the hospital with his mother, wasn't it? Do you remember them standing on that same hospital steps? He's Uncle Harry now. And he wants to make sure that the baby has fun. Now, this is the wonders of being an uncle. I'm a very proud uncle myself. In indeed, I'm so old now, I am a great uncle. Yes. I'm uncle to Gary and Jimmy and Tracy. Gary and Tracy are now married and they have their own children. So I am great uncle Chris. And the wonderful part about being an uncle is that you can be with those people, with those little people, to have fun. But when it all goes wrong, you hand them back to the parents. And uncles, I think, and aunts, never really have to get angry with the children for doing things wrong, do they? In fact, I think I might have encouraged it a couple of times. I might have been in the supermarket occasionally with my dear, dear sister. And nephew Jimmy, not recently, because he's like 16 now, so he's a bit, bit old to do stupid things. In fact, I have found, now, if I do stupid things in the presence of my 16-year-old nephew, he is, dare I say this, in, instead of enjoying the entertainment, he appears to be embarrassed. Have you found that, uncles and aunts all over the world? You have, haven't you? He appears to be embarrassed. For example, if I was in the supermarket with my sister and my nephew Jimmy, I might have started making those strange noises that I occasionally make. Some examples would be... <coughs> or... <coughs> or... <coughs> now, when I did that before, when he was little i.e. below 13, he would find that very amusing and he would do it as well. And I would say to him, Jimmy, Jimmy, go up behind your mother and do those noises really loudly when she's not expecting it. 
or at the till in a queue. You know, waiting for the checkout. <laughs> so there I'd then my sister would be in the front. Jimmy would be behind her. And I'd be behind Jimmy. And all of a sudden he'd let out a noise. And she'd, Will you stop that, Jimmy? And she'd, she'd glare at me and say, Why do you teach him these things? Because it's fun. Because uncles and aunties have the fun. You deal with the nappy changing, dear. You do the nappy changing and the cleaning up. We'll deal with the fun. Uncles and aunties absolutely deal with the fun. However, there is one little tradition that I introduced my nephew to, oh, years and years ago, when he was very, very small. Because when I go up to my sister's house in Lincolnshire, which isn't very often, but when I do go up there, um, because I work nights, I'm still wide awake at 11 o'clock when they go to bed. Because they all, all those people up north, they go to bed at like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And it's not a joke. I'm serious. They absolutely do. I've rung up my sister before at half past nine. She's already in bed. Watching the telly. Oh, I can't be doing that. Watching the telly in bed. Oh, no, biscuit crumbs. She sits there, you know, plates of biscuits. I mean, dare I say, I bet the husband's had a couple of kebabs in bed before. Oh, no. Can you just imagine that? Bits of onion and sausage and kebab meat all over the place. Not, of course, that I eat meat. I just want to I am a very proud vegetarian. I am. Over two years now. Not one single dead animal has passed through my lips, boys and girls. They haven't. Yeah, I hope you don't eat kebabs in bed, though, do you? Oh, I can't think of anything worse having a kebab. That old bit of meat going round and round in a shop window, flies being attracted to it and everything. Oh, no. Not my cup of tea. Anyway, so this tradition, near my sister's house, there is a very small hill, only about two feet high. And it's a fairly, you know, but it's, it's a quite a, uh, uh, a steep incline. And when I go up to my sister's, I tend to go out and have a walk in the middle of the night, like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. This is because I can't sleep. It's not my sleep time. My sleep time is like three or four o'clock in the morning. So I go and have a walk. And as Jimmy got older, he would say, can I come out? Can I come out, Chris? Can I come out for a walk? And I would take him out for a walk as well. And he'd usually have his bike. He'd have his little, um, oh, what are they called? Uh, BMW bike. No, was it a BMW bike? Can't think now. Um, BMW, not BMW. BM, BM bike. BMX, that's it. He had a BMX bike and he would come out on his bike and I would walk. And then he would get off his bike, and I would have a go on his bike. This is 11, 11.30 at night. Okay? And we'd walk, and I'd just talk to him about things. Maybe if it was a clear night, I'd, I'd, I'd stop and show it. Because it's very, very, like, areas up there. There's not, like, street lighting in London. You know, it's quite dark. And you can look at the skies and see uh, the sky and see all the constellations on a, on a clear night. You know, the plough, uh, Sagittarius, Taurus, and all them things up there. Really good. Really good. Right? Um, thank you, Richard. Yes, a BMX. Good morning, Richard, who's in Croydon. There was two people in Croydon this morning. John and Richard, two people. Is the entire town of Croydon with us this morning? That's the question. Have you got, got anything? Have you been to Croydon? <gasps> oh, please, if you're a tourist, do not go to Croydon. It doesn't show you the best side of London, I'm telling you now. I mean, Pearly's all right. It's all right, Pearly. But I'm um, looking at the people that, you know, are listening this morning. They're not Pearly people. They're Croydon people. Dangerous. Very dangerous. I worked at a place in Croydon years ago called, <laughs> called The Cage. Yes, The Cage. Ever heard of it? And uh, I always remember being on my way once and I got stuck on the M25 coming from Bracknell. I had my Land Rover at the time and I got caught short. I got caught short. It was awful. Fortunately, I had something in the back of my, and I had to get in. The, <laughs> I had to get in the back of the Land Rover. I did. It was awful. I was absolutely desperate. You know, I'm. No, I'm not going into details at all. No, I'm not. 
All I'm saying is that there was a good job there was a thick blanket in the back of that car, which I no longer owned after the traffic got moving. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. It's awful. I was absolutely desperate. Desperate. Desperate, dear. Anyway, as I was saying... So there's this little hit. So he, we go out for a show him the constellation of the stars, and I, I try and teach him money things like, I, 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 you know, you know, boy, a ten years old, and I'm telling him to start saving up for a house. He didn't, but you know, I said if you start saving now, it'd be so easy for you. Just put a few quid away a week. That's all. But I don't think he did. He spends his money. He's 16 now, so he's, he's got this mini at the moment. He's got this red mini that he's doing up. He bought it off his brother Gary. And um, he's now, Jimmy's now on a, uh, a work, or what do you call it? A work, ex I think it's a work experience, but he gets paid. He does get paid. Does, uh, so is that work experience? Or maybe it's apprenticeship. I'm not quite sure what, what, what he's doing now. But he, he works on cars, you know, rubbing them down on the bodywork. So he rubs them down and puts the paint on. Anyway, he's got this mini as well at, um, at home. That is doing up at the moment. The engine's already done. I think his daddy helped him do that. Uh, but he's rubbing it down and painting it and all this business. I think he's going to keep it himself. How wonderful that someone's able to do it. This is not something like I could do, you know. I'd love to be able to do something like that. I really would. But that's, that's not within... I, I can talk. I talk. I just talk and, and look pretty, really. With my new haircut. She like my new haircut. I have a number two, number half all over. Anyway, back to the story. So Jimmy um, and I, we go on this walk. We have our little chats, and then we get to this little hill, and we roll down it. We get to the hill, as long as it's not too wet. He goes at one end, I go at the other end, and it's only, as I say, it's only about it's only about six foot the, the roll length, and the hill hill itself is about two foot high that's all but it's quite steep so you go down very quickly and then at the other side of it is the road so you have to you know you must stop on time and we roll down this hill and it's just something we do might sound a bit mad to you but we enjoy doing it it's our little thing see uncles and aunts we are the fun people leave all the worries to the parents when they start crying, you pick up the phone. Oh, oh, he's crying. Yeah, can you come and get him? I'm going. <laughs> do you have anything like that that you do with your nieces and nephews, aunties and uncles? Then let us know. I have an email address. Whether you're watching live or listening or watching to a recording, you can join in by email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk So Harry, Prince Harry has said he wants to make sure the baby has fun. And I think he will do. Not, not yet, probably. But I wonder if he'll be taking him to all those wild parties that I have a feeling Harry goes to. I think Harry goes to wild parties, do you? And good luck to him. He's a prince, for Christ's sake. They've always done that, haven't you? You only got to look for the history books, dear. They've always done that. Oh, yes! Let's have some fun. The only dis disappointment I've got is that I've never been booked to be part of the fun. I mean, I can see myself doing karaoke nights at Buckingham Palace. Chris Reardon's karaoke nights at Buckingham Palace. What do you think the members... Of the royal family would sing at karaoke nights. Suggestions by email, please. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk or if you're, if you're with us live on this Friday, the 26th of July, 2013, at 10 to 11. If it's that time you're with us live, you can join in by Skype. Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon. Or phone 020 6358 What songs would each member of the royal family sing at one of my karaoke nights? 
and do you know anyone within Buckingham Palace who could get me in there to do a karaoke night? It would be wonderful. Wonderful. I would love to do that. I would, of course, do my very best. I wouldn't want to upset anyone. I mean, that would be one of those venues where you wouldn't swear. Would you? I, I, I don't think you'd want to swear at one of those nights. You'd, you'd have to keep, you know, fairly... fairly calm. No, not calm. I, I like to be a bit lively at these do's. A bit, dare I say the word, camp. It's all about having fun coming to one of my karaoke nights. And I want to do one at Buckingham Palace for the Royal Family. In fact, I'd go as far as saying I would do it. And now, don't tell the managers that I work for this, because they'll all be on the bloody phone. All the Mr. Something for nothings. But I would do it for nothing. As a loyal subject of Her Royal Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, I would happily do it for nothing. I absolutely would. We have a call coming in. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hello, who's that? That sounds like, um, speak a bit more. Gary Owen. Hey? Gary Owen from Southfield, how are you? Hello Gary, how are you this morning? Alright. I need Thanks to thank you, you. I need to thank you for that link. Everything is much uh, easier now, Gary. Anything, any, any time I can help you. Gary, would you rather me talk to you on my brand new earpiece from Reuters or my red telephone? I don't care, which I, either one, I don't mind. Oh. Try the earpiece if you want to. What? Try the earpiece. The earpiece is on now, Gary. There we are. That's fine. Works right. very well, this. Yes, works very well. Have you got any suggestions? About what? Well, what I was just talking about. Haven't you been paying attention, Gary? No, I wasn't listening. <laughs> then what have you rung in about? Oh, I just thought I'd have a chat, you know, nice day. Well, we're here to chat. We are here to chat. I was saying, I would like to do a karaoke night at Buckingham Palace. Yeah. That'd be good. Have you got any suggestions of what songs for which members of the royal family I could, uh, they would sing? For example, what would Prince Philip sing? Um, I think he would have Don't Let Me Down. Don't Let Me Down? Who's that by? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. No. You, you, hey, you should know you're a DJ. You're a DJ? Yeah. I love the accent. I'm, Give I'm us some more. The, I'm not the blinking DJ, am I? You're not the blinking DJ. <laughs> Don't Let Me Down, it's, um... Oh, who the heck is that by? It's a rock group, isn't it? Um, Don't Let Me Down. I don't. You both know. I'm not sure of that one. I don't know that one. What about the Queen? Uh, the Queen. Um, we will rock you. We no, will, we will rock you. I, rock yeah, you. I feel so happy, so happy. That's nice one for you. What was that one? I feel so happy. And who's that by? Oh, good God. How long have you been a DJ? Well, I don't know what bloody songs you're choosing from. I don't know any. Are these, are these specific songs, the wows that no one else knows okay. about? You play Stars on 45 all night, didn't you, up there? Eh? You listen to Stars on 45 up there all the time? Stars on 45? Yeah, that's, that's your type of music. I beg your pardon, it certainly isn't. But our music is traditional and nice and soothing and, you know, lots of voices behind it. Did you hear my little bit of Welsh music this morning? I didn't, no. Oh. It's a... Da do you know that one? No. What, what, what's that one called? Oh, I don't know. It's something that I've oh collected over the years. Yeah, you need a script in front of you. Oh, oh the it's, the, it's, it's, it's it, down, right? well, Richard, Richard in, in sunny Croydon says it was the Beatles' Don't Let Me Down. There but, are. but, John... <laughs> Also in Croydon, says it was ELO, Don't Let Me Down. ELO, that's what it was, ELO. ELO. I do an ELO song at my karaoke nights, Gary. Mr Blue Sky. Mr Blue Sky, yeah. Sun is shining in the sky. 
There ain't a cloud above. Uh, yeah, I love that. Song. I love a yellow. Yeah, it's really nice. Isn't it? How old are you, Gary? What's that? How old are you? Teenager two, twenty-one. Twenty-one. And a couple of years. Twenty-one, twenty-three. Well, being fifty, yeah. I know all that yellow stuff, and I love it. I wish I I'd like been it. to. I wish I was young and I was um, uh, had gone to an yellow concert, you know, years ago. Yeah. Never mind. We've missed it now. Hey, we've missed it now. Yeah, I have. What do you do, Gary? What's your What's your position in this sad, lonely, pathetic life of yours? Well, I'm starting a talk show called Facebook Talk. Called Facebook Talk. Facebook Talk, yes. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> it's just all about Facebook. I got about four thousand friends on there, and it's all about what they've been doing during the week. How come you've got four thousand friends? Because I'm good at social media as well. <coughs> oh, right, OK. And when is this on? When can we watch or listen to this? Yeah. When? Well, when it's done. So it's not on uh, yet, then? No, I'll let you know. i got a video it on mine. Well, get on with it, dear. Get on with it and <coughs> stop wasting time. We're waiting to view your results. Oh, my results. They won't be back from the doctor for ages. <laughs> <laughs> And the itch still hasn't gone. <laughs> <laughs> would you sing at my karaoke nights? If I had one at Buckingham Palace, would you come to that one? Uh, I expect so if they paid the petrol, you know. It's Are you a fan there. of the royal family or not? Uh, they're okay. Sponges a bit, don't they? You know? well, all of the, do you think they're all sponges? Or, 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 or do you sort of think that the Queen I does quite a lot? The Queen is good. Yes. And Prince Charles. Yes. But the, the rest on the periphery, they're all a bit, you know... They're not doing much, are they? No. Well, Just I think Prin Princess Anne children. does a lot. I think, I get a feeling, I think Princess Anne does a lot. We just don't hear about it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I do think she does a lot. And I reckon a lot of it is, you know, so a lot of it's for charity and that sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. She's very much... They should, have a, they should have their own, like, Facebook page and should have a list of what they do in it. So well, they're they, comfortable then. I, I'm always happy for one or two of them to come in here. Maybe um, sure maybe that. William and Kate and the baby could come in and do a little bit of an interview. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? You never know, yeah. yeah. You never know. You can always put uh, an application in. An application in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i got to go now. Thanks for calling, Gary. My, uh, and as I say, paper. thanks again. It's Gary okay. that told me that uh, we could have that URL that, that we've got now. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash users forward slash Chris Ridden UK, forward slash live for the live programmes. So thank you very much for Gary. You've made it a lot easier because it's in the same place every week now. No problem at all. I'll speak to you probably next week. Thank you, Wales. Goodbye. Bye-bye now. Goodbye, Wales. Yes. Thank you, Gary. He had no clue at all what was going on, did he? So let's be honest. He didn't have a clue what was going on. Uh, John says, never eat biscuits in bed, you get crumbs in your eyes. Do you get them in the eyes, then? Well, how do you work that out? Do they go on the pillow, your crumbs? Do you be careful with crumbs, yes. And, um, Richard says, so you don't think the Queen swears? Well, I should hope not. I think she's a very respectable person. She doesn't swear, swear Richard. Not like yourself, of course. I reckon every other word that comes out of your mouth is a bit of an expletive, isn't it? Eh? Don't forget the email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Here is a message here from Wendy. Good morning, Wendy. Who says, good morning, Mr. Reardon. It's Miss. Miss, if you don't mind, Mr. Reardon. And good morning to Kalida. In Japan. Good morning, Japan. What's it like there in Japan today? It's cooled off a bit. We have had a heat wave here, but it's quite a pleasant temperature here at the moment. Uh, certainly here in Bracknell, Royal Berkshire, where I reside. It's nice here. What's it like in um, uh, uh, um, uh, Japan? And whereabouts in Japan are you, by the way? I hope you're not near that radioactive place. Are you? Do all people from Japan now glow green because of that radioactive, um, that thing that exploded? The uh, nuclear power station. Wendy says, I love the red hands out. I'll tell you what, Wendy. If you ring me, I will talk to you on the red handset. Let me just set it up. 
And we'll see which one people prefer for us to talk to on. One moment. Plug that in there. My red handset that my niece bought me, my little niece, bless her heart, for Christmas, as one of my many gifts. Come on, Wendy, give us a call this morning. Kalida says, can we have a show dedicated to cats one day? It would be so much fun listening to them. What do you think? You can talk about all your experiences with cats and stuff. Well, I do. Kalida, I do talk about my experiences with cats constantly, as you well know. Katie, at the moment, seems to be going through a little patch of, um, uh, making, uh, pulling out her fur. I keep finding bits of fur all over the house at the moment. It probably is because it's a little bit too hot. Although she did do it before, and in the end she had to have an injection. Apparently there was something irritating her. It's happened twice. So they gave her this injection, and that seemed to sort out the problem. She stopped pulling her fur out then. But at the moment, I'm finding clumps of every morning I wake up, and there's clumps of fur all over the house, and Hoover has to be coming out. Zzzz, Hoover comes out again. Also, as the cat has become older, she has become much more vocal. She attempts to have conversations with me. Meow. 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 We love cats. Funnily enough, I was watching uh, a programme that I recorded ooh, about six weeks ago now um, about the secret lives of cats. It's a BBC Horizon programme. I don't know if it's available online at all anywhere. And that was very good. They, they put a tracking thing on its collar and some of the cats had a little camera round their necks. And it was amazing to see how far they travel. I mean, a long distance from the house at night. And interestingly, cats have very few fights. Which is probably different to what you think. All that noise... Well, you know when it sounds like they're about to have a fight? Most of the time, it doesn't get that far. Cats apparently do not like to fight. They rather stand off. And it's, a, it's usually a bit of a standoff. You know, they sit there making noises at each other and eventually one of them will go the other way. But they like to protect their own area. Also on this programme, where cats live close together, they almost timeshare an area. And they, they, they watch these cats going in and out of people's houses. And one would leave its house at 8 o'clock and get back at 1 o'clock. And at one o'clock, another cat would leave another house, go on a very similar route, you know, looking after its own area, patrolling its area, go on a similar route and come back at six o'clock. So they would almost time share an area. It was absolutely fascinating if you ever get to see that, okay? Cats, uh, the secret lives of cats, a Horizon BBC programme. Have a look at that for online. Uh, Wendy says, can you pause the show for a few minutes, Chris? I've got to make my husband a brew. Well, I don't know about that, dear. I mean, just bring the kettle into the bedroom. <laughs> Matthew, also in Croydon. See, there's another one in here in Croydon. How many more? Hi, dear. Got you on live. Just getting to go, go, ready to go out and have my hair cut. I'll have it cut off. Uh, Matthews is like over 30, Matt. And he has spiking up hair. I mean, it, it's a bit... You look a bit old to be having a haircut like that, to be honest, Matt. Are you going to burst into song this morning? Just thought I'd say hi before that... Oh, I can't read that. I can't... <laughs> Thank God that's a private message, Matt, all right? Don't forget, you can email the show this morning, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. So there's a little bit about me and my nephew and our little rolls down the hill. We do absolutely, aunts and uncles have the best time with, um, with their sisters and brothers' uh, children. And when it gets too much, we just hand them back. We are, we are ministers of fun, masters of merriment, aren't we? Um, so I went to the hospital last week 
and I've had my feet looked at at last. I've got to go back again uh, this afternoon at uh, two thirty to the um, uh, uh, Hampstead. Actually, I go to a place in Hampstead because I have a special doctor there that I go and see every few months for something. And uh, I got there, and he's uh, doing my feet today. Doing my feet today. He's already done it once, and they're being done again. Uh, so I've got another appointment this today at 2.30, so I can't do too long a show today. I know that it's going to really disappoint you, isn't it? You thought I was going to be here for four or five hours. I, I have to say, I don't know how some of the um, people who do overnight chat shows cope, really. I mean, they're on Monday to Friday, like, for four or five hours at night. I, d I don't know if I could do something like that. It'd be very long to do that, wouldn't it? Four or five hours on there. Uh, John says, tea, back in a second. There's another one disappearing for tea. Can't you take a flask in or something like that into the, into your, um, uh, into your, um, uh, whatever room the computer's in? Or have me going on the mobile phone and take me in the kitchen? People keep disappearing for tea this morning. Richard said, uh, you almost went red, dear. Well, you should have seen the message, Richard. I can't read out something like that. It's very rude, Matty. You're very naughty. Um, Kali Kalida says, did you know, Chris, that 99.9% .9 of the cats which have free colours is mostly female? Just the fact that I wanted to share with you, since your lovely Katie cat also has free colours. I didn't know that. So Kate, cats have free colour three colours on their coat, are generally female. Katie's asleep at the moment. I think she's got a new place. She's actually got a new place, um, which is on a stall in the bathroom. Don't know why she sits there, she does. That's Katie's new place. Yes. And uh, John says, Hamster, dear, don't you go wandering. I would never go. I've only been over there once, dear. Oh, no, I didn't like it. Very dangerous place, very dark. Dark and dangerous. <laughs> so I'm going to have my feet done again today. And after last week's visit, she was kind of pushing them around and moving them. And it, it was a very pleasurable experience, I have to say. And then, because uh, cause what happens, you go in there, and they're all sitting around this big table. There's like a two old gits, roughly about the same age as me. And there's lots of young people there as well, sort of... I would say early to mid twenties. They're sitting around there as well, and I appear. I said, "Oh yeah, that's Chris. Um, yes, that's your two thirty. You know, take him in now." So I had a, a nice girl. She was can't remember her name now. Oh yes, I do. Dimple. And that a lovely name, Dimple. So I went in this little room because I have been before. You may remember if you're a regular uh, uh, listener or watchers of the show, uh, you may remember that uh, back in, oh, what was it, March, I think it was, I had to go because I had a problem with a, a, a pain going from the top of my head above the ear down my neck. Anyway, that was sorted out. We think it was the driving position in my car. Well, I mean, I've always driven like that, but I got a new car... Not last May, the May before. Okay, so I've had a new car since then. And I think it was the driving position. Anyway, she did a bit of massaging and all that there. And that's completely cured. No more problems. This one is on my foot. So she was, like, pushing bits and I'm saying, yes, it's there. Or, 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 or the problem is, you know, you know just, just pushing. Manner. And she was fairly gentle. Anyway, so the bloke comes in. After after she's looked at you for about ten minutes, this bloke comes in as well. Good morning, Shania, by the way. Shania on the Isle of Wight is with us this morning. Good morning, Shania. I can see you just appear there. Um, and the bloke comes in. He grabs my foot and he says, right, does it hurt there? That's it. And he knows, and it was the same last time. You know, they're obviously very, very experienced in this osteopathy type thing or whatever it's called. I don't know. Is it, is it osteopathy? I think. So he comes in, he says, right, he says, um, and then he starts pushing up my leg, all the way up to sort of just above, was it above the knee, I think, yeah, above the knee, sort of halfway between my bum and knee, that's where we would stop, it was pushing hard there, oh yeah, that's it there, he said, you didn't expect it up there, did you, I said, no, I didn't, he said, okay, he said, have you had an accident, 
I said, um, well, I said, I got knocked over by a dog. He said, when was that? I said, Boxing Day. He said, that sounds about right. He said, can you tell me what happened? I said, yes. I said, what, a dog, I was not attacked by a dog, don't get me wrong here, but um, I was walking up to my mate's house, who's, uh, who also lives uh, in Bracknell now, Ronnie, and he, oh, I've got a story about Ronnie in a minute, a lovely bank story, and you will laugh your head off when I tell you this. Um, and he says to me, uh, what happened? So I says, yeah, one dog was chasing another. It took a dislike to the other dog, you see, and it shot off from its neighbour. It was one of those pit bull type dogs, what they called a staffy. I know staffy is not a pit bull, is it? But a similar sort of dog. It was one of those staffy. And they're just solid muscle, aren't they? They're absolutely solid muscle, they are. Anyway, so this dog suddenly shot off on its owner. I was in the way, and it knocked me flying. And I mean knocked me flying. I ended up on the floor, great pain in my knee. Actually, not my foot, my knee. Anyway, continued to hobble to my mate's house, who wasn't in. So I then hobbled back home, and... And I thought, oh, you know, I'll go, you know, and it was quite early. I thought I'll go to bed, you know, because the pain was too much and it'll be all right when I wake up. Well, I woke up and it wasn't. It was worse. And in the end, I rang up my mate and I was actually crying. It was so painful. And we went to the hospital, Frimley Park Hospital, who saw me within minutes. I have, I've got to say, you know, and I was in and out of the hospital within the space of an hour and a half. They'd done x-rays and everything. And uh, they decided there was nothing broken. Uh, something to do with a uh, uh, bruised cartilage and they put this strap on my leg so I couldn't move it anymore and two crutches and I was like that for a few days and I missed out on bookings I had to cancel all my work including the rather lucrative New Year's Eve but you know that's the way it goes it didn't really bother me too much so after a while I took the thing off and you know a few weeks later it got better or so I thought <clears throat> Anyway, so we went January, went through January, and went through February, and then my foot started playing up, and it, it's a pain on on the side of my foot, and I left it, and I thought, oh, it's just one of those things, it'll get better. Left it and left it and left it and left it. Eventually, I went to the doctor in June, early June, and because um, because I, I have I have two doctors, I have a special doctor, who's in Hampstead, and. A normal doctor here. So I went to a special doctor on a normal appointment. I said, oh, I'm having a problem with foot right here. So he made an appointment for the um, foot specialist within the hospital. Um, the Not the chiropodist, the osteopathologist, what was it, osteo person, whatever that is. Um, so I turns up for this appointment, which was about four weeks later. You know, all this time you got the pain. Four weeks later. And they'd cancelled all the appointments and not told me. And it's a bit of a trip to go in there. And I, oh, well, you know, I, I, but I'm not one to scream and shout. You know, these things happen. So then another appointment was made for like three weeks later because all the appointments were booked up. So I went for the first time last week. And that's the results they have. So he reckons it's all down to that accident with the dog. And that's the way it is. It can be sorted, but it'd take a while. But since that first visit, it is already much better. And I had to put uh, some frozen peas on the foot uh, each day. <laughs> you know, for about five minutes a day. So I get this bag of frozen peas and put them in. The first time I did it, I made the mistake of using an open packet. I thought, well, I'll just fold the top over, you know, so I folded the top over on these frozen peas, put them on, you know, and without realising it, you know, all these peas have all gone over the carpet here. Fortunately, they were still frozen. The cat went mad. She thought I was feeding her treats. She jumped up and shot down onto the floor. She was so disappointed to find out they were peas and not any sort of meat der derivative. <laughs> And actually, it is. It's not. It's not. It's not sorted by no means. It's not working. It's not like it never. There was never a problem. But it is definitely much better since she did all her massaging last week. And it was, a, as I say, a very pleasurable experience. Dimple is her name. What a lovely name, Dimple. I think her, 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 her possibly parents or grandparents must have been of her Indian descent. She has a, like a beautiful dark skin. She she is beautiful, beautiful. 
Um, so I'm going again uh, this afternoon at 2.30 as well. So hopefully a little bit more. Now, meantime, because of the muck up with that appointment, I decided to go to my own doctor as well who made an appointment at the clinic there, which is on Tuesday now, and I don't know what to do now, right? Because I'm now, they've started the treatment at the hospital. Should I go to the clinic in Bracknell as well, or cancel the appointment? I'm really not sure what to do. My mate says I should go there as well. I don't know what you think. Let me know on the email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. It's a very medical week this week coming up, I tell you. Have we got a couple of messages there, just a moment? Thought I saw a message or two then. Oh, no, no, nothing coming in. Not to worry. Not to worry. I understand. If you don't want to send messages, I understand. It's okay with me. Uh, Robin says, Just your usual screensaver at my end. No live show. Well, what's he looking at then? Just a minute. Let me just check something. Oh, there is a live show. Someone can't see it. There we are. I think he's uh, looking in the wrong place. Someone's looking in the wrong place. Yes, very medical this week. I've got dentist as well on Monday. I haven't been for 18 months at the dentist. We don't like to do dentists. I mean, we really don't. I know I've got gaps appearing between the gum and tooth, and I do clean them properly every day and every night. Oh, well, one of those things. And then I have a special doctor on Tuesday, on, on Wednesday. So very, very busy uh, medical week this week for Chris Reardon. Now... Let me tell you about my friend Ron. So he had to go to the bank this week, right? To the um, Nationwide Bank. No, not Nationwide. Where did he go? The NatWest. He went to the NatWest this week. Now, you all know about large companies and their procedures, don't you? How many times have you been standing at a desk or on a telephone tearing your hair out because some idiot has to stick to procedures? So get this. My mate Ron goes into the NatWest last week, I think somewhere in London, I think, or just outside London. And he walks up to, he starts in the queue, you know. Walks up to the desk. And he says to this stupid woman behind the desk, I'd like to pay some money in, but I haven't got my card with me this week. She said, that's okay. She says, just go over there, fill out an envelope, put your money in that, and we'll deal with that for you. He said, all right, he says, I've got all the information here. Can I give it to you? I've got my account number, my name, and everything else. And remember, he's paying money in. Okay? It's a little bit like when I put my card in a machine, in a bank, I, I never, I, I've got to tell you, I never, ever, ever, ever use cash points outside of banks. I, I think they're extremely dangerous, especially at night time. You don't know who's watching you do these things. You know, very, very dangerous to use one of these cash... I, d I don't care if there is a camera outside watching it. You know, if someone bangs you over the head with a spanner or something... Right? The camera is not going to jump down off its post, grab the bloke, and chuck him away from you, right? is he? He's not going to do that. Well, he's not. Or she, it might be a she camera. Just because it watches you doesn't make me feel... I don't, f I don't feel that cameras make me safer. I really don't. I want someone there. So I never, ever use the cash machines outside banks. Never, never. Anyway, when I go into the bank, if I put my card in, if it's a deposit, 
doesn't ask me for a pin number or anything. He just says, deposit, you hip deposit, and he says, put your money in now. Well, it doesn't actually say that. But it should do. It would make it more fun, wouldn't it? I think machines and things like that, they need to be made fun. Anyway, so he said to this woman, I've got the account number and the name and everything. He said, can I give it to you and you can do it for me? I'm, no, I'm sorry, sir. What you have to do is put a, go over there. You'll see some envelopes. Uh, fill out the envelope with the relevant information on it. Put the money in the envelope and put it in the box next to it. Okay, then. Right? So get this. You'll love this. You'll love this. So he goes over and fills out the envelope. He puts the money in the envelope. He then puts the envelope in the box. As he walks back over to the desk to do some other business, she says, hold on a minute. The woman then gets up from the desk goes over to the box, opens the box, retrieves the envelope and the cash from the box, sits back down, sits back down at her desk in front of my mate, opens the envelope and starts counting the money. And he says to her, you must be joking. And she looks at him and she says, what do you mean? He says, couldn't I have just given that to you to deal with? There it is. No, has to go in an envelope and in the box. How stupid and ridiculous is that? We do not have people with brains anymore, anywhere, do we? Unless it's done to the letter... That they have to do it all by... It's just absolutely ridiculous. And I wonder if you have any more examples of something like that. <laughs> of course, he was straight on the phone to me when he left there, weren't he? Telling me the story. I was killing myself laughing. Killing myself laughing. How stupid is that woman? Oh, oh, we've got to stick to procedures. I'll stick your procedures up your rear end. Got to stick to procedures. Or oh, it's not the right process. Absolutely ridiculous. Do you have any other examples of that? If you do, let us know. How about an email telling us all about that? My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. John, is she back? How do you know she's back, John? <laughs> I would love to know if you've got any more examples of stupidness like that, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Don't forget, you can join in live this morning if it's uh, 24 minutes past 11 on July the 26th, 2013. You are with us live, and you can join in live either by Skype, Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, or phone number 020 8133 Wendy says, Ari Ron's story, how ridiculous is that? Yeah, it's not the only time I've heard something like that, to be honest, Wendy. I'm sure if I sat here, let me just, let me move up, sat here long enough, I, I, I could think of many, many more examples of, of sh just ridiculousness like that. Rid absolute ridiculous. No, it has to be done like that. It has to be done like that, you know. I work somewhere, and I've worked with... Uh, and, uh, oh, by the way, here is, one of the <laughs> here is one of the deposit envelopes. I have one of the deposit envelopes with the NatWest, which he bought back for me to show you. Which I will, of course, return to the NatWest, in case they start ringing up telling me that they've st I've stolen one of their envelopes. NatWest, you are ridiculous. 
Someone, are, someone, someone are writing. And it has to be done this way because oh, you're pathetic, pathetic. It says the contents of this envelope will be checked and the total credited to stipulated accounts. Sub look at that. I mean, look at the wording on this. The contents of this envelope will be checked and the total credited to the stipulated account subject to the verification of all items. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> what hope is there in the world there is no hope there is absolutely no hope is there there really isn't all right uh i've had uh some some very good news this week now do you remember those of you that have been with us for uh, you know a, 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 a lifetime back in september i had a water meter fitted now, I'm very lucky. I have a three bedroom house, right? My water rates were going just a touch over 400 pounds for the year. So I think about 420 pounds, something like that. That was my water rate bill per year. OK. I had a water meter fitted in September. <clears throat> just to let you know, in the UK, if you have a water meter fitted, you have up to a year to change your mind and go back to the rate system. Which is pretty good. And water meters are fitted free of charge. So I had mine fitted in September. We get three water bills a year. So they're like third of a year. So it's every four months. The first water bill I had was £52. That was for the first four months. So it would be, oh, I can't remember, September, October, November, December, I think it was. So I got one in January for £52. So that, I was happy with that. I thought, well, that's all right, you know. So it would be roughly, I thought it would be roughly 52 times 3, which is 150 quid which is a far cry from the £420 rates. I thought, I'm quids in here, right? I had another one, like, oh, it can't be, can it? Hang on, September, October, November, maybe it doesn't, maybe it's not September, October, November, December. Well, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know. Um. But the second bill I've had only this week was for, are you ready for this? £24. £24. So that's 52 plus 24, 76. £76. Pounds, and there's only one more bill to go. So let's say. Let's say that's that's kind of between the two, roughly about 40 quid. So it's going to be about 116 quid for the year instead of 420. So there's a little bit of a heads up for you there, boys and girls. If you're living on your own and you're on the water rates, it's likely that you will save money if you go onto a water meter i mean it really is that's a huge saving that's a, that's like a little holiday to spain or something like that the savings are made on that isn't it from 420 pounds down to about 116 120 huge saving 300 pound saving remember that okay so I would highly recommend, if you live on your own and you're paying water rates at the moment, try a water meter. You've got a year to try it. They come and install it. If you're not happy after 10 months, 11 months, you ring them up, you say, no, I want to go back on water rates. And then they have to put you back on the rate system. Do it. Absolutely do it. It's got to be worth a try, isn't it? If I save you all that money... Not bad. £26. And don't get me wrong, you know, I, I, I've been... I've been watering the garden, that sort of thing. 
I have been watering the garden, especially in the summer. I don't use a sprinkler and leave it on for because I used to have a sprinkler and I would leave it on for an hour, hour and a half some nights last year. But actually, you know, it ruined my tomato plants because they started getting mouldy. I was watering them too much. Now I have one of those trigger gun things, which is great. It's got all these little different. Um, Oh, what do you call them? Different settings on it. One of the settings is, is so you get a narrow stream of water that fires. But I like to chase the cat around the garden with that. <laughs> it's very good at clean bird poo off um, of solar panels. You just aim it there and hit the hit the spray button and off it goes. Wonderful machine. Wonderful. Try a water meter. It's worth doing. OK, mind you. Stuff I saved on water, I spent out on LucasAid this week. Now, on Monday night, I was driving home, and I got the sudden urge for a small bottle. I was giving someone a lift home as well. A small bottle of LucasAid. Do you like LucasAid? I rarely have fizzy drinks. I have, in a year, in a year, I suppose, I have no more than about eight cans of fizzy drinks. That is in a year. No more than eight cans or bottles of fizzy drinks. But Monday night, I'm driving, I'm like, oh, do you know, I don't feel dry. I suddenly fancied a bottle of Lucas Aid. And I was giving a mate of mine a lift home as well. So I went in to the Shell petrol garage on Chelsea Embankment. There's only one there. And it's just after, it's in between Vauxhall Bridge and... I think it's Chelsea Bridge or Albert Bridge, in between, in between those bridges, nearer to the Vauxhall one. And if you're going into London, it's on the right. So I'm coming out of London, coming along Bankman's on the left. So you go in there, and I've been in there before to buy a, a sandwich. I don't do it very often. I don't buy petrol garage food very often but I, I, I've gone in there maybe I've been desperate to fill up or something like that and number one there is the most miserable attendant in there ever Asian guy he is he is as miserable as sin he really is and he's ar arrogant arrogant bastard he is horrible man nasty nasty man you hand him a voucher and he's like and he starts reading it and all this I'm sure he'd done me the other week on the weight rose voucher as well. I'm sure he'd done me on that. Anyway, never mind. But he's, he's, he's miserable. And you hello, how are you today? And you don't say a word. Not a word. Miserable as sin. Why are there people in that, this world like that? I'm so glad I'm not miserable. I'm just happy 24 hours a day. So I've picked up two bottles of LucasAid. Beep, 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 he's done it. I've given him a five without saying anything else. Two small bottles of LucasAid. And he's given me something like one pound and... What is it? He's given me one pound and two pence back or something like that. I looked at my change. I thought it was a fiver I gave you, mate. He said, yeah. I said, well, how much are they? And, you know, he's, he's so rude, he doesn't even answer. He just points at the fridge. So I've gone over to the fridge. £1.98 each. And I thought, how the hell did I get stung for that? I didn't even look at the price. £1.98 for a small bottle of LucasAid. Are you having a laugh? I mean, you almost expect to pay it at those motorway service stations. Because they really rip you off. You never, ever want to stop at a motorway service station. You really don't. You get charged an arm and a leg for anything. Cup of tea, about ten quid. OK, not 10 quid, but you, you get the gist. I mean, even dearer than someone I don't go into, Starbucks. Because they rip you off. Actually, the price of the drinks, I suppose, you know, two quid for a very large cup of tea is, is I suppose, a bit fair. But never, ever buy any biscuits or anything in Starbucks. Because that two quid then becomes five quid, you know, for one biscuit. Or an overpriced sandwich. How is it? One pound ninety-eight 
for a small bottle of LucasAid. So be warm there, OK? I'm going to check one of the other Shell garages, because I'm sure it's just that one. I can't believe they're all now charging £1.98 for a small bottle of LucasAid. Ever been ripped off somewhere like that? Let me know, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, just a couple of emails then, boys and girls. Hello to Marge, who sends us in. Who's, uh, we were talking about um, herbs the other week, and I've got some rosemary growing in the garden. And she says, rosemary as incense burned for burned you should burn for protection exorcism purification healing uh helping to sleep to restore or maintain youth to bring love and increase intellectual powers well i think i need an entire garden full of rosemary then march because i don't have any of these things i have no protection i must be full of the devil and I, I definitely need to be purified march I need to be purified. Healing. I need a bit of healing. I don't need help sleeping. I, I actually never really have problems sleeping. I, my head touches the pillow and I'm off. Straight away. To restore or maintain youth. Oh, that needs to be restored, doesn't it? I need to do something about these lines on my eyes. To... Although I did watch this programme this week on the telly. Um, botched bodies. Did anyone see that? About cosmetic surgery that's gone wrong. <gasps> And there's some shocking examples of that. Oh, God. This woman, she had these, she had, the, the, she had these lip thick, what's that called? You know, lip enhancement or whatever it is. One minute, let me just turn something on. Doesn't it? She had a lip enhancement where she had some sort of stuff injected into her lips. Uh, all right for a while. And then she noticed lumps were coming up i think she went to another country to have this done uh, she had lumps coming up uh, th 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 there were lump lump lumpy lips anyway cut a long story short which i'm not known to do it cut a long story short these lumps she went to um somewhere in london and what they had to do was cut her lips and then he would simply squeeze the and this lu oh it was vile Absolutely vile. This lump. Just a minute. I'm sorry. I'm trying to turn something on over here. Why won't that come on now? Come on, burst into life. That's it. Oh yes, that we are. Password. Uh, 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 uh. Oh yeah. And she, they, they would squeeze it, and this lump would just come out, and it was vile. White lump of stuff that had gone hard in her. Another one, breast implants that had gone wrong. Had gone all hard. But apparently breast implants don't last a lifetime. Some people are told that they do last a lifetime and they don't. Apparently you're lucky to get 15, if you get 15 years out of breast implants, then you're lucky. One was leaking out, she had to have it removed. And you've got all that silicone leaking into your body. Can't be good, can it? And another one had gone to Thailand and had dental implants and they were all loose. And what ended up happening, they had to drill into his jaw and remove um, another tooth that they'd left. It was absolutely rotten because he never looked after his teeth. Well, I mean, I don't go to the dentist. I've, I've got to go to dentist Monday. I've made a new dentist. A new appointment I'm going on Monday, so uh, a bit nervous about that. But I do clean them regularly and, and do the flossing and all that business. This bloke didn't do them for a while, so his teeth had gone rotten. So he'd gone to Thailand to have them done on the cheap. And they put in these screw fixings into the thing that's supposed to screw new teeth on them, so that sort of thing. And they were all loose. They were, hadn't been done properly. Awful. Just awful. See if you can get hold of that uh, TV program, Botched Bodies. It's not very nice. Um, so, and of course, the people with the Botox as well. Oh, I mean, I did just off their heads. They just look stupid. Some of them look stupid because it's not done properly, I suppose. I think you've got to spend an awful lot of money to get it done properly. But even then, even then, you see these stars that have had some sort of work done to their face and they just look hideous. 
Hideous. One of the um, one of the old detectives on. Oh, I don't know. Um, some was was a male detective. It wasn't Columbo. Was another one. I remember seeing a picture of him a while ago, and he just looked terrible. He had all his and his his face was <laughs> like all shining, where he had so much Botox stuck in there. Horrible. Don't have it done. Don't have it done. And um, Marge says, "Don't push your feet, and then they won't hurt." Your foot looked swelled up on the side there. Oh, that was when I showed you my feet last week, wasn't it? People were having breakfast. They might be doing it again this week, so I'm not gonna not gonna show them again, uh, Marge. Marge also says, hate to burst your bubble, you were talking about penguins in Alaska. He said that, she says there are no penguins in Alaska, it's too far south, unless in zoos. So I must have got that wrong, there are no penguins in Alaska, just lots of snow. Lots and lots of snow. Gaz, five, or Jez, 501, made a comment last week, on last week's show, because he watched the recording, who says you weren't using your asthma gizmo properly. Put it inside your mouth fully and huff into it. Always oh, a phone call. Can you just hold on a moment, please? It's my estate agent. Woman. Hello? Hello, Charlotte. I'm very well. Yes? 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 Yeah, I, I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Was it all, was it all clean, cleaned out and everything for them? Right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Charlotte. Lovely. Bye bye. Bye. Oh bless! It's my estate agent. Oh, it's just just check, checking into a, 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 someone's checking into one of my flats tomorrow. Because I'm a bit of a landlord as well. I'm a good landlord. You would want to rent a little place from me. You would. Anyway, uh, back to Jez501. You aren't using your asthma gizmo properly. Oh, so I was doing it last week like this, wasn't I? Uh, I would get... Oh, not good today. 475. I'm running out of air, boys and girls. Try again. No, 475. He says... <clears throat> Put it inside your mouth fully and huff into it. Not blow it like a bloody trumpet. You are hopeless, Chris. Okay. So what if I could put this whole thing in my mouth? I can't do that. Oh, oh God, it just touched that thing hanging down the back of my throat. Oh, I've probably got all infections on there as well. Anyway, let's try it again. So I've got a huff into it. All right. I'll try it again. Four, exactly the same. Four, seven, five. What are you bloody talking about? It's exactly the same. Look. In fact, it's less. Four fifty. Not doing it properly. It's exactly the same. Near enough. Don't make any difference what you do. Look. Let me do it my way. Ah, exactly the same. You doctor? Don't think you are, are you? Well, don't apply to me one. Because you got it wrong, Jez. <laughs> One more email today from James. Hello, James. Who wrote in yesterday talking. If you want to call in quickly now, only one more chance to do it before I disappear today. Call in, phone number 020 8133 6358. 020 8133 6358. Or Skype in, Skype username Chris Reardon, C H R I S R E A R D O N. One of those two methods will get you through to me. Be quick though, because I'm going to disappear in a minute. James says, just an email to let you know how DAB works, because he wrote in about um, DAB uh, radios yesterday, I think it was. It says DAB uses sky waves. This means DAB signals relies on the Earth's atmosphere to deliver its signal to you, the end user. I thought that was AM radio, not digital. I, I didn't know they worked like this. The higher the signal goes into the atmosphere, the further it goes. During very sunny periods, 
like we are experiencing at the moment in the UK, makes the signal go further into the atmosphere, which means the signal gets better, but the signal drops when the sun goes. You can check this out anywhere, and that's from James. Well, I didn't know that, James. I thought it was um, DAB Radio that... Uh, uh, that um, uh, no, sorry. I thought it was AM Radio that that depended on the atmosphere not DAB I didn't know that at all James so you've taught me something today James thank you very much uh, Shania says I have one of those asthma things at home do you Shania what do you get on yours let me do it again <sighs> ah four, 475 today so I'm getting about 475 today usually I'm about five 550 somewhere in between there so I'm a little bit less than that today and John says, I'd have thought you'd been used to... Uh, I can't read that out, John, please. This is a family show, John. Thank you very much. And that's it. Anyway, boys and girls, we're going to disappear now. As always, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining me on our little little show of fun, our little bit of fun uh, that we do each uh, and every Friday morning. Uh, if you've been watching a recording of the show, then thank you very much. Please pass on the... Um, URL address unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk right, Please pass that on on your Facebook walls or things like that. You can join me on Facebook. My Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. Okay, so it's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. That's my Facebook uh, uh, um, uh, address. I've started doing the occasional little song, singing the occasional song on Facebook as well. Uh, can't do it on here because they don't like you playing um, music. It, it, it's a funny thing with that uh, music licensing and all that. I, I kind of understand that, you know, I couldn't, I'm not allowed to play, for example, ABBA and Mamma Mia on here. But also... They don't like you singing along to an ABBA track. So if I had the, the backing to ABBA, okay, and I sang along to that, they wouldn't like that either, which is, you know, it's a shame, really. But on Facebook, it seems a little bit different. You can upload little videos. So I have been singing the odd song. Now, do bear in mind, I'm not a singer. Okay, it's all done as a bit of fun. All right? That's what we do. We are master of merriment. It's all about having a bit of fun. We don't worry about the occasional bum note or the occasional rhythm that's not quite right. We worry about fun more than anything else. OK? Uh, oh, I meant to show you this. Look what I've bought. Can you, can you guess what this is? No, it's not a cat collar for Katie. I still get occasional um, uh, phone calls of people trying to sell me stuff all the time. So I've bought this off eBay for about 99 pence, I think. It is a metal whistle. Okay, watch your ears now, boys and girls, watch your ears. So if anyone rings me up now and says, Hello, Mr. Reardon, I'm go I'm, we're going to try and sell you. I will pick up my whistle simply and do this down the phone. <laughs> and hopefully they will hang up. Can you imagine having a headset on and suddenly getting... <laughs> They're not going to like that. They ain't going to call back again, are they? Thank you very much. Just two more messages. Thank you, John. Really enjoyed the show this morning. Thank you, John. I'm glad you did. And Shania loves my singing videos. Thank you, Shania. Wendy says, great for show this morning. Thanks once again. Hope you have a good day. Oh, it's a busy day, but I feel it's going to be a good day today, Wendy. I really do. The email address, once again, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.com. .co.uk. Please send your emails in. Anyone watching a recording, it's great to hear from you. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You can also subscribe to a recording of the show on iTunes. Simply go to iTunes Podcasts and search for United Kingdom Talk. You'll be given the option of downloading either the audio-only version or the video version. 
um, and that generally appears by Saturday morning. Simply subscribe there, and it's completely free of charge. And also on YouTube, you can subscribe on YouTube as well, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Uh, Richard said, I almost blew his speakers. I'm sorry about that, Richard. <laughs> but that's what you want. You want a whistle? Keep it next to your phone and blow it hard into the phone if any of those extremely annoying people um, uh, suddenly ring you up and try and sell you something. All right. Can I just recommend, recommend uh, one more YouTube channel for you, which you will absolutely love. If you love cats, especially our friend in Japan, have a look at the user Simon's Cat. Type in to the search part of YouTube, Simon's Cat. That's S-I-M-O-N-S-C-A-T, Simon's Cat. And it's this bloke, and he does little car cartoon character, character things of cats and that. And um, it, it, it's very good. It's very good indeed. All right. I'll see you live here next Friday morning at 10.30. If you don't know where to find us on Friday mornings, simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, look at the top there, and it will tell you where to find us live on Friday mornings at 10.30. Right, I must get myself sorted out and down to the hospital to have my feet sort of looked at again. Have a lovely day. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.